Dan was asking if we use a hardware validation script to determine if a device can support Windows 11, and if not, give a notice to the tech. I haven't run that script in during deployment time, but there are uh, scripts that you can download or a script you can download. It's been available for a while. Um, it's the hardware readiness script. Um, uh, so this one here, uh, you can see the URL if I copy that one open to Notepad or something clever. Uh, just this uh, a link here. But if, if I run that script on, on this particular machine, it's going to open up a blank PowerShell prompt. I did save it out earlier at some point. Um, uh, it's going to argue and say that, no, this machine is absolutely not capable. And the reason it's not capable in, in my case is that it didn't like the TPM version I was on and it didn't like my uh, CPU uh, at all. So the CPU actually failed. But if I take the exact same script, I ramp over to one of my more uh, updated devices or newer devices. Uh, let's see where I put that little script. Apparently not there, but I, uh, I know a skill copy paste person. <laughs> Apparently, I'm better than uh, on that than typing, but I'm getting there. Fewer keys to hit. Uh, yeah. So downloading that and run it on this device. It's going to say that it's much happier because now it has a CPU that, that actually is okay. And it has a TPM that is version 2 instead of version 1.2 that will pass. As, as usual, all these scripts and the config menu inventory, the Intune inventory, it only reports what it sees, not what it's capable of. So for example, uh, you, you can't see it here, but I have a gaming rig next to me. When I run this script on that rig, it says, no, you cannot run Windows 11 because you don't have a TPM. Yeah, but I did. It was just not enabled in BIOS. And it was a virtual TPM that was connected to the CPU. And after enable that one, sure enough, it would show me that, yeah, it will run Windows 11. So don't be too sad if you run something like this in your environment or at deployment time or whatever, or if you're using the ready-made inventory in Config Manager to, to report on things. Uh, the number you see may not be true. It may simply mean that, yeah, if you have 10,000 devices, you need to do a bias configuration on. So get on those sneakers and run. <laughs> Book it. <laughs> <laughs> Or create the package and deploy it. Uh, that that or a script uh, that configures bias. Good option. Well, huh. that's running. Right. Well, maybe unless you need to get your steps in, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I could use a little bit of walking for sure. <laughs> Added a few pounds here. Uh, you and me both. <laughs> uh, too funny. Yeah, Dan was saying he was just planning on using that script, but uh, trying to figure out how to pass that output to an MDT sequence. I mean, the, the output's in a, in a sort of a, a JSON-like format, but there are some stuff in it. It's like JSON in JSON with semicolons and what stuff in it. It's not too easy to parse. But if you want to learn something about interesting PowerShell, open this script in an editor of choice uh, and, and, and take a look because the, the data they are gathering here is actually quite creative. And I even saw that Gary uh, borrowed 
part of this and made his own version of a readiness script uh, where he output the format or data differently. I found that on his repository the other day. So of course you can change it. Um, I just don't know if this one will run in WinPE. If only there was a way to find out. <laughs> if only. If only. Well, let's find out. I was what, can say go wrong with, <laughs> what can go wrong with a live demo? Uh, That's right. Absolutely nothing. No. Well, the good thing is to prove that theory, theory, surely you know a guy that can instantly load a device into WinPE. Yeah, that 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 I should be capable <laughs> of. Uh, I've seen it done many many times before. Uh, so I'm just copying that script up to one of my servers. I will head back to my boot image that I started here. It's not the latest, but it is a supported version of WinP, so that is always good. Uh, I generally recommend folks to stay away from uh, 23H2 version of WinP because uh, it's not great. Uh, someone uh, pull the trigger a little bit quick or too quick on that one. Um, Gary I'm just added in here the default one will fail on TPM. Ah, oh, there you go. Then we shall see that very shortly. That's right. Um, probably need some sort of execution policy here. I probably need PowerShell too. Good lord. <laughs> and PowerShell is only one R. Last time I checked. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. All right, try again. Set the execution policy. Good luck on setting that from a command prompt. <laughs> no force. Beautiful. Hardware readiness. Hey, boom. Well, it, it ran, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, it didn't figure out the hard drive because I do have a hard drive, but uh, it's not formatted at this point. Uh, so the, the script didn't like that. But of course, you can change it. Uh, uh, CPU it didn't like either because I'm running this on my host and the host CPU basically goes through uh, into WinPE. So, so if it doesn't work in, in the host, it won't work in WinPE either. So, but I mean, you can definitely borrowing some checks or this from the script and then used in your deployment process. Um, But please note also that these checks are, are usually only enforced when you do upgrades. When you deploy Windows 11, mm -hmm. you're not running setup. You're applying a WIM file from a boot image. This demo, whatever you're applying with, don't care. Windows 11 don't care. So you can definitely deploy it to a device. Whether you can continue to upgrade that device later on, that's a different story. You can still deploy it. I deploy hundreds of Windows 11 devices on this uh, workstation, even though it does not support Windows 11. I cannot just do an upgrade to Windows 11 on it or 20 VM running on it because of the CPU. Even if I, if I convince it not to stop because of it, uh, it, it won't run. Normally, you can set a registry key and say, hey, do it anyway. But not on this one. So, yeah. Anyhow, right. research is fun. Oh, yes. 
looks like Dan was going right alongside you at the same time here in the comments, and he got TPM undetermined on a Lenovo uh, yep. in Windows PE. So, yep. yeah, that's what we ex looks like what we expected. Yeah, the thing Fantastic. is, there are often vendor-based tools that you can run in WinPE mm -hmm. that give a lot more insight to the hardware than maybe the native PowerShell in in WinPE offers. So all the major vendors has it, HP, Dell, Lenovo, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You can run their configuration tools and make an estimated guess of depending what they put out. 